Good morning, afternoon, or evening. This is part 11. This is the second time I've tried to record it because the first time didn't go so well. Uh, honestly, here's the deal. This tutorial series, I have, oh my gosh, I have learned so much about Game Maker just in the last two months since I've started doing these video tutorials. And it's hard for me to want to continue working on some of them when I know that it's probably not the best way of doing it. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad way of doing things. This works. But it's not the best way, and I've learned some better things since then. And it makes me want to implement those into this tutorial series, the Risk of Flame tutorial series. But honestly, that would be an insane, an insane amount of recoding in this. And we honestly can't do that. So, I will point you to some videos in this one that will teach you some better ways of doing platform physics. One that I'm going to mention is uh, Sean, I think his last name is Spalding, I don't remember, Sean something. Anyways, he does, you, he does Game Maker tutorial videos and they are awesome. I would highly recommend watching them. I've learned a lot from them. We have kind of different styles. He has a tendency to be a little bit more laid back than me. I'm kind of high strung, but he's, he's, his tutorial videos have a lot of really good information in them, so I'd recommend watching them. I'm going to put one of those in the description, and if you're feeling really ambitious, switching the, his platform physics over into this game would be a really, really good thing to do, but we're not going to do it. So that's just if you want to try and do that on your own. What we are going to do today is, and man, I lose track of this game so much because I'm focused on other things. So, uh, oh, in the comments, tell me, I'm thinking about doing a Pokemon type game because everybody loves Pokemon. I love Pokemon and if we could do a game similar to that, like build an engine for a game like that in a tutorial video, I think there would be a lot of people interested in that. So tell me in the comments if you want me to do that. I might try and finish up Risk of Rain this week as just like a basic game engine and the tutorial series and start a new one kind of headed in that direction. So tell me what you think. But what we're going to do today is, as you can see, I've already created this sprite and it's just a fireball sprite. And I think this is 12 by 12 pixels. Pretty basic. Uh, you guys can draw this fireball sprite. I've got two animations just so it looks like it's moving a little bit. They're not even really that great, but it looks it looks okay. So we're going to have the enemies attacking, right? Because it's not very fair if the player can shoot the enemies and they can't attack back. So let's come into our enemy artificial intelligence, right? And... Uh, in here, we've got them moving towards the player if their distance is less than 8. That's kind of awkward. It feels really weird to have the enemies move that close to us. So I'm going to do 32. I think that'll be pretty good. We'll, we'll have to see. Let's, uh, let's test that and see what that actually does. Yeah, so uh, they don't really move. Like, that's that's pretty close. And now we can shoot them, just continue firing at them. And uh, they will die. So let's go in. And that's. I think I'm going to leave it at that right now. So come back into the enemy step event. And what we're going to do is we're going to do an else this whole section right here so if they are close enough we're going to have them uh, fire the bullet, but we're going to use an alarm for this. So, sorry, <laughs> I had that whole moment of pausing there because I was thinking, I, I have a tendency to stop right in the middle of a sentence. Sometimes my wife thinks it's pretty hilarious, but um, let's try this. So, if alarm zero is less than or equal to zero, uh, so what an alarm does is when you set an alarm, 
with GameMaker, it literally just counts down every single step until it hits zero and then it executes the alarm and then it goes to negative one and just stops at negative one and doesn't go any lower than that. So uh, we're just going to check to see if the alarm is uh, zero or lower and if it is we're going to set the alarm to and I want to make this kind of a longer period of time so that these enemies aren't like machine gun you know rapid fire so alarm zero equals let's try it for now let's try 120 and see what that does now we're also going to create we're going to call this object enemy fireball well let's just call it object fireball object fireball we'll give it this sprite awesome so inside of our uh, enemy we're going to give it a couple variables. In fact, first thing I want to do that's been driving me nuts, I want to change this to three health so that you can kill them in one shot or one th uh, three shot round. So instead of here, we're going to do if, um, <laughs> sorry, we're going to do uh, attack equals object fireball. So you can do that. You can assign an object to a variable. And that makes it useful if you ever do other types of enemies. You can have the same basic enemy coding, but just give them a different attack and they'll shoot a different object. So that's really useful for parenting type stuff. Now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to create a variable called um, attack underscore uh, I'm because I I have to pay attention because some of you guys still use the Mac version, so let's just call it att equals zero for now. That works great. So uh, what we're gonna do is give me just one second. I gotta unlock the door because my wife's coming back from grocery shopping. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to. Uh, inside of this alarm we're going to create a new object and that object is going to be a our attacking object so instance create x y and we're going to assign it to a variable so att equals instance create x y attack so we'll just create our attacking object and then we're going to do att dot image angle no image x scale equals image x scale. Yeah. And then we're going to do if image x scale equals one att dot direction equals zero else att dot direction equals 180 and that is and we're going to give it a speed att dot speed equals I don't know three maybe that might be kind of fast actually well, let's do four five 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 sounds good we'll try five now uh, we want to make sure that the alarm is set at the start alarm zero equals zero I guess for now who cares and we want to add the actual alarm this is unfortunate the game maker actually makes you add the alarm but whatever I usually just comment this out do nothing because we're actually executing what happens in the alarm right here this is our check to see if the alarm has actually gone off so let's uh... let's <laughs> let's see what this does we want to give our our uh... these same properties that the bullet has we want to give those to the fireball so i'm just going to give it a parent of the of the bullet so Let's uh, see what that does.
Nice. <laughs> They're shooting at each other. So, yeah, we can't give it a parent object of the bullet. Let's just do the same code here. Add event collision with the wall. We'll copy the instance destroy over and inside of this where we go outside the room, uh, it's the same code. So make sure to not have that be the parent because <laughs> the enemies were shooting each other, which doesn't really work well with our uh, thing. So let's uh, duplicate event, other outside room. Whoa, okay, so, yeah, they're shooting now, that's for sure. Um, we can't actually take damage, though, and I don't even remember. I don't think we've given ourselves even a health. Yeah, we don't have a health, so let's give our player a health. HP equals 10, max HP equals 10. We'll just do that for now. And then inside our step event, we're going to do if HP is less than or equal to zero, game end for now. You'd want to have like a death animation or something a lot fancier than just a basic game end. But for now, this is what we're doing. And then we're going to have the player have a collision with the bullets. And we'll just subtract from his health. Just one damage. HP minus equals one. Let's see how that works. Okay, so they're going to be shooting at me. And if they get close enough, We need to destroy the bullet when, when it collides with the player. So let's subtract 2 HP actually. And with other, which is the bullet in this case, instance destroy. Awesome. Oh. That was smart. Jumped right up into it. Ah, dang it. Okay, I actually want to make sure that I can die, so I'm going to get here close. And that is a pretty long fire period for them. They wait a long time to shoot that next fireball, don't they? Oh, yep, you can die. So there's the basics for enemy attacking in this. And uh, we, we, I mean, that works. That works well. This game, it's, it's, uh, it's come a long way since the start, and I've learned quite a bit on it, and I'm planning to do a few more tutorial videos on it, but I want to finish it up here pretty soon, calling it just a basic game engine that teaches some stuff, and move on to teach you guys some better things, some of the stuff that I've been studying the last little while. So, thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you guys later.